Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Gratisher, Director of Breast Oncology at Northwestern University. One of the most common questions that we discuss with patients is what the risk of recurrence is. When we see patients with early stage breast cancer, one of the concerns that all patients have is what is the risk of the disease coming back? And that's the focus of a lot of our discussion. We try to put into context what a patient's risk is that the disease may recur either locally within the breast or even of greater concern is if the disease shows up somewhere else in their body. This is an event that ne doesn't necessarily occur next week or next month. It can occur years later. We look at each patient individually based on a number of different characteristics of their disease and we arrive at an estimate of what the risk of recurrence is. If it reaches a threshold where we think that additional treatment is necessary, we talk about adjuvant treatment of breast cancer. Adjuvant therapy really means we're addressing microscopic disease that can't be detected by a blood test or by an x-ray, but statistically based on what was found at the time of surgery, a certain fraction of patients are destined to develop recurrent disease. And if we think an individual patient falls into that group, we generally recommend additional therapy. Additional therapy can take the form of chemotherapy or anti-hormonal therapy or even newer targeted therapies. And our decision about which of these or combination of them is most appropriate for a patient, again, is based on the characteristics of the disease. When we give therapy uh, that's called systemic adjuvant therapy, it's something that goes everywhere in your body. So for instance, drug therapy such as chemotherapy is frequently given through the vein. And the purpose is that it circulates everywhere in your body. Again, the goal being to eradicate, get rid of microscopic disease wherever it might be, so it doesn't put the patient at risk of developing the disease two, three, or 10 years later. Similarly, anti-hormonal therapy, which is oftentimes administered as a pill, is absorbed through the stomach, gets into the bloodstream, and circulates everywhere in the patient's body. So again, it's the same concept, that we want the drugs to go everywhere. And then, of course, there are newer drugs like trastuzumab, which is an anti-HER2 type of therapy, and this is meant to address a certain subset of breast cancer, which I'm sure we'll talk about in other little video clips that we have on this topic. When we make a decision to give adjuvant therapy, we frequently do it relatively close to the time of surgery. And the goal, again, is once the patient has recovered from surgery, we want this therapy to get into their system as soon as possible to eradicate microscopic disease. Generally, if a decision is made to give chemotherapy, it's given over a period of anywhere from two to four months. Uh, it's not necessarily given on a daily or weekly basis. There are specific schedules depending on the recipe of drugs that are administered. Once the chemotherapy is given, if it's recommended, then we go on to anti-hormonal therapy, if that's appropriate. And again, the decision about how we use each of these things is dependent on the characteristics of that patient's disease. So some patients have hormone-sensitive breast cancer, others do not. Some patients have HER2-positive breast cancer, others do not. So depending on the characteristics of the individual's disease, this is what really is the basis for our treatment recommendations. Anti-hormonal therapy, as an example, is continued often for five years. If we give anti-HER2 therapy, it's given with the chemotherapy and even beyond it up to a year period. And again, that is all individualized based on the characteristics of the disease. When we look at a patient long term, we know that uh, we're going to be following them for many years. So even though the therapy is discontinued after a period of time, we watch patients for a long period of time afterwards, always monitoring them for any symptoms suggestive of a recurrence. Adjuvant therapy is associated with specific side effects. And again, we, we describe those to the patient when we're considering treatment because we have to have them understand what the consequences of the therapy might be. There are short-term side effects, such as hair loss with chemotherapy, blood counts may transiently go down, but they usually fully recover. Individual drugs have specific side effects, which tend to be something that a patient tolerates generally pretty well, but recovers from completely after the completion of therapy. 
Anti-hormonal therapy, depending on the drug a patient receives, may have specific side effects, but generally is very well tolerated. And similarly with anti-HER2 therapy, which is not chemotherapy, uh, there are specific side effects that we describe to the patient. In an effort to improve the overall outcome of patients, we often talk to patients about clinical trials. Clinical trials are a means to conduct clinical research in a very rigorous way. And it should always be kept in mind that whatever we view as standard therapy today, whatever drug we have available was once part of a clinical trial. And at that time, it ended up being better than what was ever the standard therapy of the time. So today, we often conduct clinical trials in patients with early stage breast cancer, trying to improve upon the currently available therapies. So it would be quite common for you to be offered a clinical trial if you have early stage breast cancer. And it's often a comparison of standard therapy to a newer therapy. It may be a slight modification of chemotherapy, a slight modification of anti-hormone therapy. And it may indeed represent the best available option for the patient. And this is how we get new drugs into clinical trials, how we ultimately get them to all patients, is by rigorously conducting clinical trials, often involving thousands of patients, to really judge the effect of that therapy, if it's better than the standard therapy or not. So it would be very common if you are offered a clinical trial, and it's something we would strongly encourage patients to consider.